One aspect of the planning you need to do for a project is working out exactly what has to be done. But this gets you only part of the way toward being ready to chart a clear course of action. After you've defined the required activities, you also have to put these activities in the right order. This is also referred to as sequencing activities. It's important to sequence project activities because of the logical relationships between activities. If you don't account for the natural logical sequence of events early in planning, you may waste a lot of time and money by assigning resources before they are needed, or worse yet, not assigning them when they are needed. Sequencing activities allows you to identify the logical relationships between activities so you can develop a realistic schedule. Except for the very first and last activities a team performs in a project, every activity will have another activity before it and one after it. A predecessor, Block A, is an activity that starts before another activity. And a successor, Block B, is an activity that begins after another activity. Sometimes activities can run concurrently, which means work on two or more activities can happen at the same time. Notice that activities can be labeled with numbers, letters, or with any labeling system that works for you. The label keeps things simple, but you will likely have a separate document that tells you more about the details and attributes of each activity. A dependency exists when an activity can't start until another one is completed. As a simple example, you can't approve the copy for a direct mail campaign until it has been written. So the activity of approving the copy depends on the writing activity. This flow diagram also indicates that the letters must first be approved before you can print them and put the letters into envelopes. A key tool and technique when sequencing activities is the precedence diagramming method. It's what you use to create a project schedule network diagram, the backbone of the schedule. Once you've identified the types of dependencies among activities, the next step is to represent these dependencies in a schedule network diagram. We're going to use the direct mail campaign activity list again as our starting point. To begin, you add a node to represent the first activity, which in this example involves getting approval for a direct mail campaign project. Next, you represent each activity that's dependent on the activity that comes before it. In the direct mail campaign, all activities depend on the first one, but graphics don't need to be approved before copy is written. So for now, you leave out the second activity, which is approving graphics, and you add a node to represent the third activity, writing copy. Activities 2 and 3 both depend on getting approval for the project, but they are independent of each other. When there is no dependence between two activities, you place the non-dependent activity beneath the first activity on which it doesn't depend. So in this case, you place the node for Activity 2, Approve Graphics, beneath the node for Activity 3. You continue adding activities until you have a logical pattern of sequence, dependent, and non-dependent activities. In this case, Activities 4 to 6 must each complete in sequence. So you add a node to represent each one from left to right on the same level as activities 1 and 3. Last, you should identify any external dependencies. The fifth activity, printing, will be handled by an external company, so you highlight it in a different color from the other nodes. Once you've laid out the nodes for each activity, you need to represent the dependency relationships between each of them. We use arrows to indicate the four types of relationships between nodes. In a finish to start relationship, one activity has to end before another can start. In a start to start relationship, one activity must start before another can begin. In a start to start relationship, an arrow goes from the top left corner of activity A to the left side of activity B. In a finish to finish relationship, one activity must finish before another activity can finish. In a finish-to-finish -finish relationship, an arrow connects the right-hand side of Activity A to the top right-hand corner of Activity B. In a start-to-finish relationship, one activity must start before another can finish. In a start-to-finish relationship, an arrow goes from the top left corner of Activity A to the top right-hand corner of Activity B.
In a schedule network diagram for the direct mail campaign project, you start by showing the finish to start relationships between activity one and activities two and three. Because there's no dependency between activities two and three, no arrow links the nodes for these two activities. Activity four cannot start until both activities two and three are completed. So you represent finish to start relationships between the second and fourth nodes and between the third and fourth nodes. The same type of relationship exists between activities four and five. It's possible the team could start activity six before activity five is completed. However, activity six can't be finished until activity five is finished. So you add an arrow to represent a finish to finish relationship between the last two activities. So now you know how setting task dependencies and sequencing and prioritizing tasks can help you develop your project schedule.